What's up? Sideways, we're at Lincoln College of Technology, and uh, this is Drifting 101. College. We're here to learn about drifting. Dude's running it to Jay Z. <laughs> Underneath the RX8. <laughs> cool cars that the students get to work on. We didn't get to do nothing like this back at our school, or when I was going to school. Yeah, um, driftingme.com, that's where I come from. Who's heard of drifting before? Just a great by a show of hands. Who's actually gone drifting before? And legally or like, no, 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 you're not supposed to do that. It's not good. Is it a field? Uh, that doesn't really count. <laughs> um, my name is Edgar. I work with uh, US Drift Now. I uh, started here with driftinme.com. Um, and uh, pretty much, you know, we were invited out here by Lincoln Tech to come out and talk to you guys a little bit about what the drifting motorsport is, where it came from, where it's going, and the possibilities with it. Um, this is Brian Eggert. Uh, Brian, also with US Drift, and he's a Formula D judge, works for Formula Drift, which is the Pro Series. Um, he flew out here from uh, Virginia to kind of join us and kind of walk us through uh, this history um, of drifting. I'll go ahead and uh, pass it over to, to Brian here. We'll get started. Uh, I guess for a start with uh, drifting, we're going to go over tires from the beginning. Uh, the main thing that uh, any of you heard of a thing called slip angle. Okay, uh, those who have it, kind of need to bend on your thumbs up for you. But, uh, Basically, the tread on a tire goes in the direction it goes, but the slip angle. Uh, Dagier Renata from uh, Option Video Magazine started the first drifting event, uh, or the second drift event, but there's an actual series called Eka 10, and this basically gave them kind of a, a way to, to, to hone in their skills and everything, and they got away from being illegal, which is what he mostly used to do. He actually also got banned from, I think, racing for a while from doing some of these videos because he was promoting street drifting, and some of the race series he actually competed in uh, temporarily kicked him out. Move forward a little bit to the 90s, Option Video continued, uh, continued their Ikaten series throughout Japan, and then in 1996, they actually brought an event over to Willow Springs Raceway in Rosamond, California, just outside LA. Uh, it was done in conjunction with a couple other road racing events, and it was more of a, an exhibition than an actual competition, but it did take place in the 90s there. Uh, a couple of US drivers also competed in, such as Reese Millen. Uh, in the 2000s, uh, the people over at Option Video ended up deciding to create their actual first professional drifting series. Originally it started out called the All Japan uh, Drifting Championship. Uh, when they started this, it was in October of 2000, and then uh, they actually didn't do tandem competitions. They did single runs similar to like qualifying nowadays. Uh, after they saw that it wasn't as exciting as they wanted it to be, they introduced doing two cars at a time, and then the following year, they renamed it to D1 uh, GP, which was the D1 uh, Grand Prix. Um, the group I work for is US Drift. We did our actual first event at Summer Point Motorsports Park in West Virginia in 2002. Uh, it's the longest running drift competition in the US right now. We just had a race uh, last month. It was our, uh, uh, Edgar was there, so it was fun. And that was round one of our series for this year. Uh, now in the 2010s, uh, drifting currently takes place on six continents. Uh, Alaska obviously being the only one that doesn't. Uh, as of December, there was at least 47 drifting competitions around the world. Uh, there's been several others that we haven't just added, but. There are all over the place. We try to keep track of them all. Um, the sport is definitely growing. We have a big global presence with Formula Drift. Uh, they've started now doing events over in Japan. They have a series they run in Asia. Next year, they're talking about trying to do an actual World Series, kind of like how Rally is, where people travel all around the world doing this. Um, uh, also known as Dorykin or Drift King, was actually about 17 years younger when he grew up watching him drive. He uh, basically learned how to do that and did it on his own on the streets, and basically they would call it two gates, and they would go up and down mountain roads in Japan. You're sitting in a classroom, but you know, in reality, you, a lot of us started, you know, 
we, we found drifting, you know, back in the 90s. Bill, raise your hand. He's probably the <laughs> oldest drifter that I know. 90, 90 what, Bill? 97, 98, right? Yeah. 98. 98. You know, I don't, I don't know. A lot of you guys were probably little kids back then. You know, I, I was playing like Sega Genesis back then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, drifting has definitely been around. Um, you know, it's been a lot of work. Um, you know, you, you go up to the track, hey, I want to drift here. Oh, what's drifting? Just like I heard a little bit ago. Oh, yeah, I used to do that out in, you know, the boonies or out in the cornfield or out in the parking lot, stuff like that, which you're not supposed to do in today's world. You know, there's a lot of uh, sanctioned bodies and events. All you have to really do is go to recmagazine.com and check the calendar, and uh, trust me, there's going to be an event near you. You know, getting into drifting is not as difficult as other motorsports is. But it definitely, you know, at the competitive level, it has definitely taken a lot of money from a lot of drivers. So, you know, is drifting obtainable to a lot of you guys? It is. Is there mechanics that are in need? Definitely. Race teams needing spotters, tire changers. I mean, you name it, they need it. Fabricators. A lot of these guys do all the work themselves. You know, how's your mechanic doing? He's currently sitting in a classroom full of students. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of these guys that have learned this trade from doing it all and educating themselves on what's going to make their cars faster, uh, what what you know what kind of suspension piece they need to get more angle or you know something that's not going to you know break during a competition. You know, so there's definitely um, room to grow. And you know, all Brian's really you know kind of preaching up here um, and, and kind of going through the history of drifting and how it's grown. It's that it's definitely going to keep growing. It's not going anywhere. So what did you learn here today? I need to boost my car and get a turbo. You have any questions? Yeah, when's lunch? Hey, how you doing? Hey, it's my favorite class. Your what? It's my favorite class. Lunch is your favorite class. Yep. Lunch <laughs> time. And I got pizza. You're eating here at Lincoln College. It's official. I'm a student. I'm at my favorite class. Hey man, let's go back to class. Nah, let's go see. Back outside, and it's time for recess. I'm standing next to this badass 8.6. Let's check it out.
that's it. I had fun here at school. Most fun I ever had going to school. I hated school. Now I love school. I'm gonna sign my ass up for Lincoln College Tech. That was awesome. That was just so cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, he didn't tell me till he was done that he hadn't done this since last fall. Like riding a bike. Yeah. What's next? A lot of fun. <laughs> cool. It's the dumbest thing in the world, but it's the most fun thing. I can see why you guys love doing it. It's control chaos. That's what it is. Fun.